Hello, James Duffy here with a short unboxing video. This is the new F-117 Nighthawk rocket-powered boost glider kit from North Coast Rocketry. The kit first appeared at NARCON 2020, which is the National Association of Rocketry's annual convention. It was held in Tucson this past March. Since the time of that convention, anticipation has been building for the release of this kit, and it is finally here. This is a pre-release edition, and we'll be taking a quick look at the kit parts. Now, in full disclosure, I, I need to state up front that this kit was provided to me by Matt Steele, the owner of North Coast Rocketry and a good friend of mine. I should also mention that the kit was designed by Dave Myers, who Matt worked with at Estes Industries in the mid to late 1990s. In fact, a very similar model of the F-117 was prototyped by Dave during his time at Estes, and it actually appeared in the 1996 Estes catalog. That kit was very similar in size to this one, but it was to have been made out of molded foam. For whatever reason, Estes decided not to release their F-117 kit, but the idea stuck with Matt. So several years ago, he reached out to Dave and asked him to revisit the model for possible release as an NCR product. Let's talk a little bit about how this model will work. If you've ever built an old Estes Sky Dart, you'll recognize the principle immediately. Here's one I built from the reissue that took place about eight to 10 years ago. The motor is mounted into a pop pod that slides into the glider portion of the model and in this position, it holds down the elevons in a flat boost position. Here's the elevon section right here. There's also a weight at the forward end of the boost pod, and it moves the center of gravity forward for a stable boost. At ejection, the pop pod gets ejected rearward. Listen here closely. Hear that little click? The elevons just kicked up into a glide position from the boost position. Now, as the pop pod comes out, the weights are no longer part of the equation and the glider is trimmed for optimal glide performance. The same principle is gonna work on the F-117 kit, although on a larger scale. Also, instead of both elevons moving as a single unit, only one is going to move. That allows the model to slowly rotate around the roll axis during boost, which is going to improve stability. At ejection, that single aileron will shift into the glide position. It's tricky to describe, but it really is very simple and very effective in use. Let's dive into the kit and take a look at the parts. First up, we have a very comprehensive instruction manual that runs all the way to 24 pages. It's gonna guide you through the, uh, the whole process very clearly and completely. Next, here is the main fuselage molding for the model, which is vacuformed out of what appears to be O2O thick styrene. People tend to freak out when they are confronted with vacuform parts, usually because they're called upon to stick one vacuform part onto another vacuform part. That's not the case here. You won't have to do that. Um, those kind of parts tended to show up in mid-70s, late-70s Estes kits, like the Star Trek models that they produced, as well as the large Maxi Brute scale models. This looks like it's going to be much, much easier to trim and assemble because there's only one large vacuform component. Here's a small bag of uh, tiny parts that we're gonna be taking a closer look at in just a moment. Slide that out of the way. Next up, we have a lumber yard's worth of wood in here. First up is uh, a plywood sheet. This is 1 8 inch laser cut plywood. It looks like we've got a couple of triangular bits that are gonna be installed near the nose of the model, as well as some centering rings that are gonna become part of the pop pod. There's also a hoop that's gonna help center the core tube inside the fuselage. Here are a couple other pieces that are gonna help 
secure and locate that core tube as well. We also have the two ailerons here. Uh, note that only one of them has a laser cut hole for a control horn. That's because, as we mentioned earlier, only one of the ailerons is going to shift position after boost. This little bit here is kind of cool. This is a template that will help mount the fixed aileron into the appropriate position. These long pieces right here are going to get sandwiched between the forward and aft balsa pieces for the wing. Speaking of balsa, here are the four laser cut balsa sheets in the kit. These are thick, one quarter inch thick pieces supplied as two wing sets. I'm going to set one of the wing sets out of the way. This part just dropped out, no big deal. And uh, we're gonna take a closer look at these real quick. First off, this component is the leading edge piece. This is the trailing edge piece. And there's a little bit that gets attached towards the trailing edge of the wing at the center of the model. The long plywood bits we looked at a moment ago are gonna get sandwiched between this piece and this piece when we assemble them together into the wing. These smaller bits right here are going to build up into the vertical stabilizers. There's a very distinctive V-shaped vertical stabilizer assembly on the F-117. Notice these small laser cut rectangular holes right here and here. These are where the plywood parts for locating the core tube are going to be assembled later in the build process. There's an odd balsa bit right here. This is a template that will help the builder position the two vertical stabilizers in the appropriate position during assembly. Remember we talked about the V-shaped stabilizers just a moment ago? You just hook this jig over the tops of those parts and let the glue dry. I love stuff like this. Here's the core tube assembly. It's a section of BT-55. This will permanently become part of the glider. We also have a section of BT-50 over which a length of BT-52 will be sleeved in order to make the assembly more robust. The pop pods on gliders like this and the, the sky dart we looked at just a moment ago tend to take a lot of abuse, so this, this makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's move on to the small parts bag. We'll start with these very intriguing looking 3D printed parts. Here are a couple of launch lugs right here. I probably won't use these. I tend to prefer rail buttons instead. These large triangular parts here are attached to the underside of the glider nose and they offer a really cool way to manage nose weight. There's wells in each of them and they're sized for common US pennies. That gives you the ability to add or subtract pennies until you get to the optimal weight for glide performance. There are little round bits that did cover the wells on these triangular nose weight bits. It's a really cool idea. Let's set those to the side. These next parts are really intriguing and they're the source of the magic that makes the model work. They're all gonna be used to create the hinge mechanism that will allow the aileron to actuate a ejection. This part here mounts lengthwise on the underside of the model and interfaces with this, which is the pivot for the aileron actuating lever which is this wire bit right here. When the pop pod is in place, the lever is held down and the moving aileron is held in a position so that the model can roll on boost. When the pop pod ejects, the lever can move, allowing the aileron to go into the glide position. It's all a bit abstract here, but it works exceptionally well. It's simple and it's dead reliable. There are a few more bits here that mount onto the aileron and act as the pivot and position stops. This screw right here will mount into one of them so that the stop position can be adjustable using the screw. There are also a few rubber orthodontic bands that uh, are supplied with the kit and they provide the horsepower that make the actuating mechanism work. Also in the bag are a sheet of pressure sensitive markings, a streamer for the pop pod, a Kevlar shock cord, and a sticker for attaching the shock cord to the streamer. This is a really surprising bit right here. This is a chunk of pipe 
that becomes part of the forward end of the pop pod. It acts as a mass that keeps the CG as far forward as possible during boost. When it gets ejected, the CG of the glider moves aft, allowing the glider to, well, glide. It's very similar to the sky dart we looked at a moment ago. Also included are some hinge material for the moving aileron and a couple of North Coast rocketry stickers because marketing. Finally, let's take a look at the vacuform fuselage body. This is a really well molded bit and it should be easy to cut away from the backing sheet. Normally I'd use a common ballpoint pen to mark the cut line, but that just won't show up on this black plastic. Just for grins, I tried out a silver paint marker as a way to mark the cut line and it worked really well. It's something you may want to try yourself. In reviewing the instructions, it appears the game plan is pretty straightforward. You simply build the wings, shape them with a fair amount of elbow grease, and then mount the vacuform fuselage on top of the wing assembly. You then add the two V-shaped vertical stabilizer assemblies. Finishing should be pretty straightforward. You just use a quality black paint like Tamiya Black Spray Lacquer and then add the markings. There are a couple more goodies in the bottom of the box. First, there's an NCR postcard that you can send to your grandmother. Oh wait, now there's stuff all over the back. So grandma's not gonna get a postcard. Thanks, Matt. There's also a uh, emery board uh, that's uh, customized by NCR. You can use that to clean your igniter clips. Always a nice little thing to have in your range box. So that's the kit. The obvious question that springs to mind is this. Can it be converted to accommodate a radio control system? My initial impression is yes, there's plenty of space underneath the vacuum-formed fuselage shell. I lack the RC pilot skills to really take advantage of such a modification, so my copy is gonna be built straight out of the box, although I may do some unusual stuff with the paint. Overall, I'm very impressed with the kit. The engineering and execution are both top rate and construction should be fairly simple and straightforward. However, there's gonna be a fair amount of mindless sanding needed in order to get the right shapes into the balsa components. That's not hard, just a little bit time consuming. Once you get past the sanding dust though, painting is gonna be a breeze and you can get your rocket onto the pad quickly. The F-117 Nighthawk will be available directly from North Coast Rocketry at a special introductory price of $117. I'm told that it will also be available from Apogee Components and E-Rockets. Thanks again to Matt Steele for the review copy of the kit and congratulations to both Matt and Dave Myers for bringing this to market almost a quarter century after it was first teased in the 1996 Estes catalog.